Today, what we're going to be looking at is running through the starter base, upgrading the power. So, unlike the start of last time, this time you can see a continue game button, which is allows you to continue a game after you've already started. And of course, you could also use the load game to access it if you have more than one world. But we're just going to click continue game. All right. So in the last episode, I realized that we built the starter base, but didn't really discuss it. So on the, if you open the cargo container, you've got this page. So you've got, it will show up with a small cargo container here and your inventory here. Now these buttons will do stuff. So this allows this, these are all your build plan. This other than this one, these three are like your build planner ones. So this adds a component to the queue this withdraws the stuff so this is middle mouse button this is shift middle mouse and this adds a specific component which is control shift middle mouse this deposits all ores which is alt middle mouse and this allows you to drop whichever item is selected and it'll just drop it onto a floor now if you click the box it will show connected inventories on the ship or station in this case it will be a station so we can see the cargo container, the basic assembler, the basic refinery, the survival kit, the uh, uh, and the H2O generator as well as the two connectors. So the small cargo container is the one we're looking at. This is designed to hold more. We did have one on the small blue ship that we started on. But this is larger and can hold more stuff, which tells you up here. So 2,000 out of 15,000. Then you've got the basic assembler. Well, the survival kit, which we did actually have on the other ship, can build. It's not a uh, can build basic production thing as a, it can't build as much as the basic assembler and the basic assembler does it faster. The basic refinery also allows you with the survival kit, you needed to create any ingots and but the basic refinery you don't need a minimum amount of stone to be able to produce any of the basic resources and then you've got the o2 generator which is just the same as the other one just this one's a little larger and the reason why we built the base is so that we can are able to connect build these connectors here which we'll run through in a minute of what we did this just allows ships to our ships to recharge so the other advantage of the upgraded production over the survival kit, which only allows you to create basic tools, the data pad and basic equipment allows you is that you can click on components, which will show your components tools, which allows you to even build a bit more advanced versions of the tools and consumables, which are ammo. And this is canvas, which you use for the parachute. The so if we wanted to we could build the enhanced welder but we need cobalt which isn't the basic resources which we'll need to go find you've got the enhanced drill which you can build now and the enhanced grinder each of these weld grind faster and the drill drills a larger area faster and more efficiently i believe for the drill like you get more out of it though i haven't actually tested that so yeah now if we press g to open the block the blocks and go down the side here to power blocks you can see all the power blocks you have in the game uh we haven't unlocked them all so but so far we've unlocked battery uh both regular and small batteries the hydrogen engine the wind turbine and the solar panel there are also reactors you can unlock later what we're going to use is both the battery and the solar panel, uh, as well as more wind turbines. The wind turbines so that we have a constant import of power. The solar panels so that the uh, for more power during the day, and the batteries to store the power so that during the night we don't run out. So of course we need some steel plates first. So we take out some steel plates and we can place one, two batteries. 
as well as what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, one, two, three blocks out in each direction. Okay, so now that we've built our plus symbol, what we're going to do is we're going to press eight and place one, two, three, four solar panels. All right. So after building this plus, I've then attached four solar panels to the wrong direction and four uh, more wind turbines. Now, as you can see, this wind turbine in the middle is suddenly moving a lot slower. And this is because the clearance is a lot less. It's also turned off all our power. So if I press K on the item and go down to wind turbine, you can see that the wind cl clearance, which was optimal, has now decreased to poor. So it is no longer producing as much power as it was. So because of this, we are going to take down this one in the middle. And move it to this one at the edge. Okay. Now that we've ground down that middle one and moved it to the outer one, it is now spinning at a not quite as fast at fast speed, allowing some power to still be active on the base. If we go to the control panel and go down to the wind turbine, you can see that the wind clearance is good. When previously it was above 400 and the wind clearance was optimal. Now, well, this is a technically a decrease when we're trying to increase power. The difference is this 300 is then 300 times four, which is 1,200. So while it decreases per wind turbine, it increases overall with more wind turbines. So as always, we're going to shift and right click each of the things we still need to build. So the four solar panels and three wind turbines, which we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Perfect. So now we're gonna drop down and shift middle click and go to the basic assembler production. And we can see that all the components have been added. Now, it looks like we don't have enough iron to complete all this. So we're gonna have to do some more mining but that's not that big a deal. We can always finish this. We'll just mine. So we have run into a small problem. Even though I've been mining, we're not producing enough power because the required input of this is 300 kilowatts. But the max output of this is currently 300 kilowatts. So to save this, what we're, what we're gonna do for now is grind each of those down. Still have the resources, but grind them each, each of them down. We'll put the resources into the cargo container. And now that it's got better wind clearance, you can hear the refineries working again. So we can turn back on the basic assembler and the H2O generator. I keep saying H2O, it's no 2 h 2 generator, which is different because H2O is water. But we'll leave that and then we can put them back when we go to actually build the rest of the power. Okay, so after some quick mining, I'm hoping we have enough power, uh, enough resources to be able to build one of these solar panels, which we may do. And we're gonna build this one first. Don't worry about falling through the gap, because somehow you can float between them. Which is handy. And voila.
we now have a solar panel that currently has half its power from the sun. So now that we know that this can do 300 power, how much can this solar panel do right now? The solar panel is currently able to output 64 kilowatts. The other one's currently outputting 400, which means our total power is actually pretty high. Now it seems that the power is going down. Where's the sun? It's over there. And I can't tell whether it's setting or rising. If it's, I'm assuming it's setting because the power is getting lower. And that's what a solar panel happens to a solar panel when. Yeah, and as you can see, it's currently only outputting 2.2 kilowatts because that's all it needs to. But it seems to be decreasing. Which makes me think that the sun is indeed setting. And in this game, the sun is literally setting because of the way it's designed. The sun does move around all the planets. So we're gonna, for that reason, we're gonna leave the other ones down because once it gets nighttime, we're not actually gonna be able to uh, use this to help power it. So that's a waste of time. But once the sun comes up in the next in-game day, we still use we still put them in place because the slower panel should be able to run it itself. I just realized something after coming back up from the mining trip. I should have checked to see what resources came out because according to the resource machine uh, in my inventory, I also brought out enough for one wind turbine. So we place that down. See. Which now means that we've gone from one optimal to two, which should have good clearance. Well, let's see. So if we access the panel, which I'm accessing from pressing the little keypad thing on the bottom, we've got 369 because only one's in the way. So it's still optimal, but not quite as high as it was. Plus another 363 three together. So that's opt up to optimal. We do indeed have some more stuff, which is for this solar panel, I believe. Though I do believe I went around the other direction, so it's technically not for this specific solar panel. Do we have any more resources? Ah, yes, and the five interior plates I brought with me. So we'll put those back. Actually, no, what we can do is now place the other two wind turbines down. As well, they'll drop both of these, which we can check, which I'll show you. Down to just good at 300 and 395 from just different angles to the mountain. That is still enough power to run this. And we'll refuel our energy and health, which is getting quite low. There we go. But back to mining to finish up getting, building all these resources. As you can see, it's nighttime now. So you can see that the little, well, that the solar panel, instead of having green dots telling you how much percentage is being used, they've now gone yellow to say that it's inactive and they would turn red if it was off. But of course, the two solar panels is more than enough to keep everything on total solar. The two wind turbines are more than enough to keep uh, the power in this base going. And lights back on so you can see them. At this point, we are about halfway through all the production needed. Just a little bit more mining to go. Okay, so we've now got all the resources. We're gonna middle click to remove all the resources. Then we're going to, again, double click to weld so that we don't have to keep holding down the weld button. And voila, we now have four wind turbines plus four solar panels. We're also almost out of power, but if we press, Energy low. if we go to this wind turbine, the clearance is still good and it's 300. Wind turbine 11 has 280, 
It's also good. Wind Turbine 3 is got 300 clearance, uh, 300 max output, and it's good. And Wind Turbine 9 uh, has a 295 output, and its wind clearance is also good. Which does mean that it's producing slightly less each than the one, but it is producing more overall. Next up, we need to do the batteries. So we're going to first refill the energy. Then we're going to shift right click on each of the batteries. Shift middle click. Go to the production page. You can see that they've all been selectively added. And now we need to do some more mining. Now finish mining. Ooh, sun's come out. Uh, stop raining. Uh, the... The... Uh, what were we? Batteries, yes, we finished mining and we've now built both batteries. Uh, batteries work with, there's three types of modes. There's auto mode, recharge mode, and discharge mode. Auto mode uh, means that if there's enough power, it will recharge. Currently, it's got three hours. Uh, and if it needs more power, it will, uh, if it, and if the station that it's connected to needs more power, it will then release the power. Recharge means that no matter what, it will always try to recharge. Uh, and discharge is the opposite. It will, no matter what, it will always try to discharge the power. Now, discharge and recharge, I would have on at times when, like if I had a ship and I needed to park it, like recharge mode only, when the ship's parked to recharge. And talking about ships, that's what we really need to move on to next. So oh, what we're going to need to do next is, is we're going to go and build a com It's going to grab the conveyor junction block because it has all the other tubes. Next what we're going to do is we're going to say, com well, we need interior plates first, uh, interior plate. Conveyor junction, then what we're going to do is this direction. Is build out to here and stop and then on this direction what we're going to do is build up then across nope didn't mean to place that block there that one this one this one this one this way then up and Yes, what we want is a connector, but we don't have that. So we go and check the progression again. And you can see that the connector requires at least one of these things to be built. So we're gonna start by building this conveyor junction here. So as you can see, we have nothing in the build planner. Shift middle click, and if we press G, oh, it's right click, Never mind. So we've got conveyor junction, then to how many more? We can add a few more. Two more. There we go. You have to be quite close to do this. Is that it? Yep, that's it. So then shift middle click and production. Wow, we actually have quite a lot of the stuff already. Quite a lot of the resources to build the stuff as well. So, oh, no, we ran out. So if we middle click to see how many we have, we're missing some small steel tubes. They are being made, though. yes, they are. But we have most of the other stuff, so. There we go, and haha, we've now unlocked connectors. So we put a connector down, one, oh, I need steel plates for that one. So one steel plate there, and one steel plate there. And so, voila. Uh, 
as we build up this one. Right click. And then shift middle click. We then add one connector to the conveyor belt. Then we carry on building this one. And then this one. So let's see if we can grab a few more resources. Out of small steel tubes, but. I just realized something. We forgot to remove this respawn point. So if we go I to GPS and then we click delete, that allows you to remove that GPS point. So it will no longer be there. Though, it's probably good to add one before because so we're gonna set stand just in front of the thing, go to GPS, click new from current position, which allows us so we open the inventory with I, click the GPS tab. Click new from current position so that it says where we are. And we're going to call this base number one. So that points to where we are. And so that allows us to see it from far away just in case we travel anywhere. Just so we don't get lost. All right, so if you want to see this rover here that we've affectionately named Grass, make it all the way to the unknown signal. Be sure to subscribe to not miss the next episode. Bye -bye.